Just before we get started, I do want to say that this video is brought to you by Audible. Many of you probably already have Audible and listen to audiobooks just like me, but if you don't, you should. More from Audible later in this video, including a book recommendation from me. But if you want to get started right now and get three months of Audible for just $6.95 a month, go to audible.com forward slash brain food or text brain food to 500 500. So in the video today, we're answering a viewer question because Sawmill Turtle asks us, would you be willing to look into the origins of one for me and one for my homies while pouring some drink on the ground? To most people, the idea of pouring one out in regards to the act of pouring a small amount of some manner of alcoholic beverage onto the ground in remembrance of one's dead homies is a pop culture phenomenon. But it turns out the practice's origins can basically be traced back as far as recorded history. Noted as being one of the oldest known human customs, pouring one out, or libations as it's more accurately known, is a ritualistic practice that humans have been doing for at least 5,000 years. Virtually Actually indistinct from its modern equivalent, the earliest known group to do this, the ancient Egyptians, generally didn't pour out alcohol in reverence of their fallen kin and friends, but instead commonly poured out water. This is thought to be because it had rejuvenating power and it was associated with giving life. That said, ancient Egyptians were known on occasion to pour out other liquids in memory of the dead, including things like milk, honey, and occasionally wine and other spirits. Whatever they were tipping, the general practice was to pour out a bit of the drink, imbibe the rest, and break the containers that the drink was in on the grounds, leaving the remains behind. As an example, pouring one out is specifically noted in the Papyrus of Annie, dating to around the 13th century BC, where it notes, Pour libation for your father and mother who rest in the valley of the dead. Do not forget to do this even when you are away from home, for as you do for your parents, your children will do for you also. The same is true of other cultures across ancient Africa who, in addition to pouring libations in memory of others, did so to thank the gods and or ward off vengeful spirits as the situation required. Moving on to the ancient Greeks, they similarly offered libations to both the gods and fallen comrades, usually in the form of sweetened wine, which they'd pour a little of out before drinking in appreciation of whomever they were honoring. The act of the Greeks pouring one out even gets its name dropped in the Iliad, specifically in Book 6, where the mother of the legendary warrior Hector tells him, Wait till I fetch you some sweet honeyed wine, first to pour a libation to Zeus and the other gods, and then for your relief, if you will drink. Moving on from the Greeks, the Jews also got in on the action. For example, just as an offering is recorded, among other places, in Genesis 35:14, where it states, Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he had spoken with him, God, even a pillar of stone. He poured out a drink offering on it and poured oil on it. And in fact, it would seem that virtually every other culture has engaged in this practice throughout history, which, judging by our research, is virtually all of them ranging from the ancient Chinese to the indigenous people of South America. And they all did this for the same reasons, in homage to various gods or to the deceased. Although some cultures certainly took this practice more seriously than others, a personal favorite being the ancient Romans who created stone chalices built into their tombs that mourners could pour wine into, as well as drop various food items into. These chalices would even sometimes contain a sophisticated draining system with these libation tubes funneling the alcohol or other item directly onto the corpse. Yep, in this case, mourners could quite literally pour one out onto the skeleton of the person being honored, which is probably the most metal thing we've ever talked about here. According to one Dr. Tracy Prouse of McMaster University, one didn't even need to be wealthy to have a libation tube. It is commonly found in graves of people from all stations. She also states, The main point was to maintain an ongoing relationship with the dead, so their family would sit and have a meal at the gravesite and share that meal with the deceased. Romans believed that they had to keep the spirits of their ancestors content, otherwise they might become vengeful. Offering proper rituals and libations was a way to keep them happy. In the Western world, this type of practice did see a sharp drop-off with the rise of Christianity, though still endured across much of the rest of the world, including throughout Africa, where it is still an extremely popular tradition even to this day. On that note, exactly how humans went from dumping gallons of wine onto the skeletons of their ancestors to ritualistically pouring one out onto the sidewalk while looking as threatening as possible in a music video, it's not definitively known. However, given that this was 
more or less introduced to pop culture thanks to a variety of African American hip hop artists, and Pouring One Out has been mildly prevalent in African American culture, particularly in the southern states, for centuries, it seems likely that this wasn't something that some rapper or producer came up with independently while planning out a video shoot. It's far more likely they were already familiar with the custom, at least in some form, and decided to incorporate it into their act. This trope particularly saw a huge surge in popularity in the 1990s thanks to the likes of Boys to Men and Tupac Shakur, with the latter directly referencing the act in several of his songs, most notably Pour Out a Little Liquor, which was released in 1994. In fact, Tupac was so linked to this practice that one of the first things people did upon hearing that he'd been killed was ceremoniously pour liquor onto the street corner where he was shot, something that apparently still occurs on occasion to this very day. But to sum up, nobody is really quite sure who first got the idea of pouring one out for your homies, as it's seemingly been something humans have done for as long as we've been humans. But given our propensity to give food offerings to deities and ancestors seemingly throughout history, it's not exactly a surprise that we also thought offering set entities a drink would be a good idea. Or, as Dr. James Early, a director of the Smithsonian Institution's Center for Folk Life Programs and Cultural Studies notes, there is something very basic about pouring blessings into the earth. That is where you are buried. It figures into all worldviews and religions. We initially emerged as a people living very close to the earth, and the earth provided everything we needed. We poured libations to acknowledge that our love and insights do not come solely from us, but from those who came before us. Now, just before we jump into the bonus facts for today's episode, let me say that this video is brought to you by Audible. Audible is a leading provider of audiobooks with a vast selection. They really have books on almost any subject from fitness to Fitzgerald. It's all there. Now, normally I give some sensible non-fiction recommendation based on what you just saw, but lately I've just been into a really good novel called The Travelers by Chris Pavone. It's incredibly page-turning. If you could do that with Audible books, I'm not sure if that's the right phrase, but it's a very page-turning book. It's perfect for listening to this winter. It's just very exciting. I'd recommend you go check it out. I thought about non-fiction. I was like, no, I'm really enjoying this one. Go check out The Travelers by Chris Pavone. All right, so why do it with Audible? Well, that's because it's just the best way to do it. Membership gives you one free book a month, no matter the length. Huge range of titles, like I said. It's also got an amazing app you can speed listen, which I particularly love with non-fiction books. And you also own all the books, so when you leave, you get to keep them. Also, they now do something called Audible Originals, which are exclusive audio titles created by celebrated storytellers from all sorts of spaces like literature, journalism, etc. You get two of those a month in addition to the book. So, to get three months of Audible for just $6.95 a month, go to audible.com forward slash brainfood or text brainfood to 500 500 if you're in America. Musicians have been paying homage to the practice of pouring one out, going back a lot further than modern rap. For example, an Irish musical ballad dated to the mid 19th century called Finnegan's Wake talks about an old alcoholic called, funnily enough, Finnegan, who passes away and is then revived by some spilling of whiskey on his coffin. A nod to the fact that in Gaelic, whiskey translates quite literally to water of life. Not an isolated instance, the idea of libations is a common theme in Irish folk music even today, with bands such as the Dropkick Murphys making reference to it in songs like Jimmy Collins's Wake, which contains the lyric, We've gathered here to bid adieu us Boston boys. Alas, our few, some from Crosstown, some from the coast, to give our skipper one last toast. We'll pour the good stuff round his casket. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. And don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. And as always, thank you for watching.